Behold, ladies and gentlemen, here we are about to start the big debate of the 11th edition of the Mind Mind Summit. Well, the topic is, in the opinion of this house, the wealth of India's temples belongs to the people of India. This is the topic and we are going to have a very interesting debate. So a humble request to all in case your mobile phones are not on silent mode or are not switched off, kindly do so. Check. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we start with a big debate. First, let's welcome our esteemed group of panelists. First and foremost, Mr. Mani Shankar Iyer, Member of Parliament, Rajya Sabha. Can we have a round of applause, sir? sir? <laughs> Names to your right. We can do much better. Let's have a big round of applause, sir. sir. Welcome, sir. Up next, we have Mr. Suhail Seth, Managing Director, Managing Partner, Council Age India. Can we have a round of applause, sir? sir? Moving on, we have Mr. Prabir Bhakchi, Vice Chancellor, SRM University. Can we have a round of applause for Mr. Bhakchi? Come on, we can do better. Round of applause. All right, up next we have Mr. Pavan Verma, Member of Parliament, Rajya Sabha. Can we have a round of applause for Pavan, sir? Up next, we have Managing Director GM, GCMM Amu, Mr. R. S. Sodi. Can we have a round of applause for Mr. Sodi? Welcome, sir. Now we have the Chairman, Medwell Ventures, Mr. Vishal Bali. We can do much better. Come on, this is the big debate. In fact, I call it the great big debate. And to moderate, we have none other than Mr. Ronajoy Banerjee, Corporate Editor, CNBC TV 18. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the topic behind me, the big debate, in the opinion of the House, the wealth of India's temples belong to the people of India. I will not set the context, that's the whole idea. It may sound a bit vague. Uh, and on my left hand side are those who will be speaking against the motion. So the leader of uh, the opposition side is Mr. Sohail Seth. We have Mr. Bakchi and we have Pavan Varma. Speaking for the motion, the captain of this side is uh, none other than Mr. Manishankar Ayer, Mr. Sodi, and Vishal will also be speaking for the motion. So each speaker will get three minutes. Where is my bell? Yeah, now it's, uh, can I have the bell? Okay, somebody, will somebody ring the bell or? Okay, so each speaker is gonna get three minutes. All right, three minutes. No, we have just, I was just informed now because of paucity of time, we'll, three minutes. So after two minutes, the bell will ring first. <laughs> and after three minutes, the bell, somebody will have to frantically ring the bell because nobody exceeds the time limit. All right, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's. 
kickstart the big debate. Mani Shankar Air speaking for the motion. In the opinion of this house, the wealth of the temples does belong to the people. Mr. Mani Shankar Air, please. Well, the wealth of the, the, the wealth of the temples does belong to the people because this is the people who gave them that wealth. And yet there are some elements, I suspect among you, who'd like to get your cotton picking fingers on that wealth that is stored there. There's a large number, some among you here, and many others outside, who have huge NPAs. And if you succeeded in getting your hands on all the gold in the wealth stored in our temples, I understand from Mr. Munjal that it's about 4,000 tons of gold, then of course, you'll be able to get rid of your debts more easily. And there are lots of incompetent finance ministers who would like to bridge their fiscal gap by stealing the money that the people have put in there. I'd also warn that anybody who attempts to take the gold off the Golden Temple in Amritsar is stoking trouble for himself, that if you attempt to raid Mazars, you're going to be in trouble. And therefore, on a much bigger scale, anyone who attempts to do to the Thirupati Temple what Mahmud Ghazni did to Somnath Temple is going to suffer the same fate at the hands of the most dangerous group of Indians today, which are the Indians in the government. So watch out. Please don't steal the wealth from the people. I myself am an atheist. So I would never give a penny to these temples. But I have seen the comfort that temples give to a lot of people who otherwise have no hope in their lives. And to steal from them, the only refuge they have for their souls is, I think, a completely undesirable and undemocratic act. So since the wealth of the temples belongs to the people, even if the people should make better decisions, since they have put it in the temples and done it over a long period of time running to thousands of years as a result of which we are able to preserve our heritage traditions customs and culture i say keep your fingers off that gold thank you thank you manishankar you had you had another 30 seconds more but uh, sohail said speaking against the motion go ahead I think my good friend Mani got the topic wrong. It says the wealth of the people and temples. It doesn't say the wealth of the people belongs to the Congress family. Uh, I meant Congress party. Number one. Number two, if you give your money to a temple, how does it remain yours any longer? I mean, I've not understood. If this was the economic policies of an erstwhile government, I worry. So I've donated my money. That money belongs to wherever I've donated it to. I mean, that's logical. It doesn't belong to the people. It belongs to trustees who emerge from the people but are actually, some of them are deep thieves. I don't think that is the intent of the topic. The intent of the topic, to my mind, was that when this money goes to places like temples and mosques and churches and gurdwaras, who does it belong to? I haven't seen God. I'm an atheist. I don't know if many of you have seen God, unless you've just seen Modi's uh, convoy pass. Uh, so I really don't know where this money goes. But all I know is that the trustees live well. Uh, they battle for trusteeship in these temples and gurdwaras. So Beer Badal may have lost Punjab, but he keeps the SGPC alive. So obviously, there's a lot of money to be made, even when it is actually in God's name. I think the argument should be, what do we do with this money? And what is happening with this money? Should this money be pushed back into development? Should this money be used by temples to create schools of education? Should masjids create madrasas which actually teach, rather than you know, teach you a particular kind of, uh, of, of theory? I still believe, let's go back into history and see what the purpose of community building and community participation was. Temples were also seen as a social cultural hub. Culture has gone out of our temples, it's gone out of our religious places. So our argument is that the wealth belongs to the temples, but sadly, the temples are not using it. And I'm not talking about temples as in just temples. 
any religious place is actually not using it for the betterment of society. Yes, I'm proud that Gurdwara still offer langar. I'm delighted that there are temples which contribute to the Akshay Patras of the world, the ISKCONs in Bangalore. Those are the models we believe tomorrow's India and in fact today's India should follow and pursue. The wealth that is being generated and is being donated by the people is being donated out of belief and trust. We have no business to deny belief and trust and opportunities to the less privileged and people who have had the denial of opportunity. So our argument is it doesn't belong to the people. It belongs to communities that are impoverished thanks to the denial of opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sohil. So the opening arguments have been made. Now, team proposition, who's going next? Mr. Sodi, go ahead. One I moment, let me set my timer. Yes, you can go. OK. You see, first let us go back. Why temples or these all uh, religious centers have been built by our religious leaders? They are, besides a common place for prayer, they are built and also exhorted and uh, I mean requested people to donate just to pool the resources to give benefits to the underprivileged or less privileged. You see, all spiritual groups started with that only. Later on, their objectives, people may have changed. But when it started like this, and this wealth was used for, for providing food during drought, during wars, aggression, I mean, th this wealth was used for public purpose. But what happened over a period of time, some, some these religious institutions using this wealth as a stagnant wealth, where wealth is stacked in the basement or bank, thousands of crore rupees or gold or everything, and some places it is used as a flowing wealth, where whatever money comes, it is used for the benefit of others. What I feel is that it belongs to people. So it should be given back to the people instead of stock, I mean, keeping in the banks or in the basements of uh, temples or any other religious. I mean, being a Sikh and a cooperative, I can give you small examples. In a cooperative society, nothing. Dr. Vagis Kurin used to say that cooperative is like a matter of faith. It's like a religion. You have it or you don't have it. And in cooperative also, whether all caste, creed, religion, small, big, their contribution, whatever share price is one, but benefit is same to everybody. Like 70 years back, Amul started a shareholder of 10 rupees. Today, if any farmers join, same share he gets at 10 rupees, he gets the benefit of same Amul brand, which may be valuing more than a lakh crore. So sharing the wealth, by wealthy people who are earlier children. And uh, in Sikhism also, our first guru, Dr. Uh, Shri Guru Nanaji, his main things were, krit karo, kaam karo, vandike khao, manna, distribute your whatever you earn, and naam japo bhagwan. So that is why in Sikhism you see, anywhere any disaster is there, whether Uttarakhand you know what happened, Nepal, Chennai, immediately whatever these, uh, religious issues are there around, they have gone for langar, feeding, medicine, sheltering. Even in Joshi Mutt, money was given people to, because whatever people are lifted by helicopters, money going back to Tamil Nadu, anywhere from wherever these people have come. But here, what I want to say is, whatever wealth is there, it has to be managed by the people. So democratic setup should be there, like government. Elected body has to be it, not trusted. So this is what my submission. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Sodi, you may have inadvertently swayed a lot to the side of the against in some of the arguments you've made, but I'll leave it to the August House. We'll take a quick vote at the end of it. Now, speaking against the motion once again, this time is Mr. Pavan Verma. Mr. Verma, your time starts now. I think the proposition has not demolished the fact that when people donate to the temples, they are donating to the temples and not to an amorphous entity called the people of India. This is a matter related to faith. You can question the practice. You can wonder why in Hinduism everybody is in a rat race for individual moksha. 
through anonymous don donations. But you cannot question the legality of the ownership of the person to whom that donation has been made. Secondly, I am very suspicious about this term, people of India. Because people of India is usually interpreted as the representatives of the people of India, which in turn means governments. And when governments take over money donated to temples, even though a lot can be done with that money for the benefit of the people of India, usually you find that both the money is depleted and the cause is diluted. So you have the Tamil Nadu government which has nationalized temple trusts today in ownership of 487,000 acres of land which belongs to temples which should generate an annual revenue of 6,000 crores but the Tamil Nadu government now earns 58 crores annually from those lands. In other words, na khuda hi mila na visale sanam. The person who with faith gave it to the temple that has been taken away and its ut utilization has been so suboptimal that the whole process of giving it to the people of India is diluted. I would say that a much better proposition is that those who donate out of faith to a temple do so, but the temples themselves as the trustees of that wealth then use that wealth. And that is something we should all push for. They use it as trustees for the welfare of the people. In other words, the ownership remains, but the goals, the aims, the motivation, the impact of that wealth changes. There is a notion in India which counters that of individual moksha, and that is paropkar. Give back to the people what the people have given to you. I believe temples can do it much better because they are motivated by the right level of dedication and sacrifice and at least spiritualism. Then governments who use the same money to open canteens which are run poorly with the picture of the politician on the walls of that canteen, as has happened in many parts of the country. So I say, let's not question ownership. That ownership incidentally also includes rare antiquities, jewels, Pieces of art, let them lie where they are, but let them be on display. Let that wealth be used for larger purposes, but let's not question the ownership. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pavan Verma. So you've heard two speakers from either side. Now we go to the, the our final speakers for the day. Go ahead, Vishal. So, uh, you know, I've been hearing our opposition talk about how it should be used how it can be, more, be made more effective. What is temple wealth? Ultimately, temple wealth is like a social impact fund. It has to be managed by the people who understand it best. We have enough examples in this country where social schemes like the ESI and some of the others, which were, which were actually introduced for the well-being of the people, actually never end up getting utilized because they are in the coffers which are under the maintenance of the forces that be and so therefore it never goes back into more effective social, social, social impact. I think it is therefore important that the wealth which is sitting in the temples, the wealth which is sitting in these kind of environments are best used by the trustees of those environments. Yes, one can question the abilities of those trustees to use the wealth in the right manner, but one sh should actually let that wealth lie over there so that a lot more social good can be done with that, right? And therefore, the impact of that has to get created by the people and not by agencies which will probably try and monetize that wealth for other beings. And that's, that's all that I have to say. All right, Vishal, thank you very much. Uh, so I think the line that separates the proposition from the opposition is getting slightly blurred from where I stand. Final word then, and after, before we go to the audience, after Mr. Bakchi speaks, the leader of the proposition and the opposition gets three minutes each for one last time to make the concluding remarks, and then we leave it to the August House to vote, and you tell us where your preference lies. Mr. Bakchi, your time starts now. I think we are already winning. 
but I'm going to uh, review a little bit from, uh, from my experience. I have raised a lot of money, endowments for universities. Two ways they give money. One is they have certain purpose in mind. <coughs> Second is they trust the receiver, usually it's a dean, that good use of the money would be made. Now, if I draw a similarity with temples, people donate either for a purpose or they trust that money would be used gainfully. So I think this topic is slightly, uh, uh, should have been slightly modified. Should this money that lie unused be used more productively? And the answer is absolutely. Because dead money in a vault, dead gold in a vault is of no use. So if you trust the trustees, now you can question trustees, uh, but assuming they are up to their task, they would be in a position to honor the wishes of the donor or they must find a way to use that, temple, uh, that money. Now I understand, I just now found out that Golden Temple does indeed do exactly that. So the uh, verdict is clear. It doesn't belong to the people, but it should be used for the benefit of masses. Thank you. All right, I must say all the speakers have stuck to time. In fact, some have finished well before time, but thank you very much. Those were the principal views from both sides. Now, three minutes each to the leader of the two teams. Maybe Mr. Manishankar Ayer, you can go first, your concluding remarks and your final punch. I, I would like to thank Suhel and his colleagues for having made out an excellent argument which should have been made from this side of the house. They've accepted <laughs> that the people of India over centuries have given their wealth to the temples. The temples have trustees. The trustees are governed by a trust deed which sets out the objectives of the temple. And the objectives of the temple are essentially spiritual, the maintenance of the temple, but there is no incompatibility between using the funds for purposes of relief of the kind that Mr. Sodhi referred to, or for the welfare of the people, and promoting the basic objective, which is meeting the spiritual needs of the people. And I think Pavan put it best when he said that the temple's trustees should certainly be the trustees of the money that has been entrusted to them by the people, but they should use it for the welfare of the people. Now the subject before us was not about whether trustees are doing a good job or not. It's a question of whether the money that people have given to the temples belongs to those who have given the money to fulfill their spiritual requirements, or whether it should be nationalized by, by the government or taken away by individual entrepreneurs. And there, I think, one should draw a line because people are both materialistic and spiritual, but while they can get along with monetary loss, it's very difficult to persuade them to accept spiritual loss. And spiritual loss would be deeply involved in robbing the temples and other places of worship of the wealth through which they maintain the spiritual traditions, which don't mean much to me, but mean a great deal to most Indians. You'll spark a terrible rebellion if you allow the wealth of the temples to be filched by those who are not the trustees of the temple. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manishankar Ayer. Sohail Seth, final words. Your time starts now. Manishankar Ayer is one of India's most eminent debaters. But then when you spend so much of time in the Rajya Sabha amongst a lot of people with feeble intellect, 
you two things happen number one you believe in things that you haven't said you've said and two you begin to be suspicious about everyone just because they're on the other side so let's go back to the topic the topic says in the opinion of this house the wealth of temples belong to the people two of your speakers money mr sodi of amul and mr bali of a fund therefore he mentioned social impact fund both mentioned that it doesn't belong once it goes it should be used for the greater good a point that all three of us have made and i made that even in my opening remarks point number 2 let me give you a live example pavan verma is people pavan verma donates money to a temple that money no longer belongs to pavan verma it belongs to the temple our argument is that it will never belong to the people but it has to be used for the greater good belonging and use are two different concepts both in english language and in efficacy of usage so your point stands demolished yet again number 3 and i will end on a very nice note remember the purpose with which and i mentioned this in my opening remarks temples mosques gurudwaras there are a lot of them which do amazing work but they do amazing work in spite of the people who've donated the wealth because many of the people who've donated money are crooks criminals and politicians not necessarily in that order <laughs> have a splendid afternoon god bless each one of you and may god continue to bless america <laughs> well ladies and gentlemen those were the arguments from both sides let's put this to vote now those who feel that the wealth okay yeah those who in, yeah make it simple right. boss don't convolute those in favor say i and raise your hands no 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 what what favor those who agree with the those who agree with the disagreeable <laughs> <laughs> those in manishankar ayer side please raise your hands no hands are oh that's the majority no, 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 wait, we want it's less than 44 and those in pavan verma so hill seats team minority well we must say that the motion has been defeated and uh, ladies and gentlemen thank you very much but we have to thank mani and his colleagues for helping us win can we have a big round of applause for this very interesting uh, big debate i would request mr sunil kan munjal to kindly grace the stage and present the mementos to our esteem group of panelists can we have a round of applause for mr munjal first and foremost mr mani shankar ayer member of parliament can we have a round of applause for sir thank you sir for giving us your precious time up next mr sohail seet managing partner council age india we can do much better come on this was one of the most uh, interesting debates i've ever heard <laughs> up next mr pavan verma member of parliament rajya sabha <laughs> mr prabir bagchi vice chancellor srm university Mr R Sodi managing director GCMM Amol and Mr Vishal Bali chairman Medwell Ventures Once again a big round of applause for a streamed group of panelists and of course we have uh, Mr Ronjoy Banerjee a moderator can we have a round of applause for him thank you gentlemen thank you for giving us your precious time ladies and gentlemen just 2 minutes to reset for the last session of the day